let's have a quick look at single phase motors. With a three phase motor, the motor starts because there is a rotating magnetic field. On a single phase supply, we can't get the rotating magnetic field. So we have to use a series of electrical techniques and tricks to make the motor start. Um, if I do a very quick run through, this will be the run winding for this type of motor and it's permanently connected in the circuit. I'm going to run through a range of different types of motors. Sometimes the next winding is in circuit, sometimes it's switched out of circuit. So in this type of motor, the split phase motor, there is an additional winding and we call it either the auxiliary and that's written in your handout or the start winding. So it's used to start the motor and it's in series with a centrifugal switch. It would have helped if that touch there there we go centrifugal switch let me just write that out okay so the centrifugal switch works on rotational speed the faster it goes then what will happen is as a motor reaches a particular speed the contacts will open and take this out of circuit. So coming back to these two windings, in the motor, the run winding and the auxiliary winding are mounted at 90 degrees to each other. That's shown in the, uh, the image in the bottom right hand corner of page one of your handout. So that gives you a 90 degree phase shift straight away. And it's that phase shift that helps to make the motor start. And what will happen is once it runs up to speed, this opens and the auxiliary winding is taken out of circuit and just the run winding is all that's needed to keep the motor going. So this type of motor, a split phase motor, is typically used for um, bench grinders and small machines. It's not very good for frequent stop starts. So moving on to the next type of motor we're going to look at the capacitor start motor once again here is the run winding and on the capacitor start motor it too has an auxiliary winding to make it start but it also has a capacitor in series with it and once again we have the centrifugal switch so that's normally closed and when it runs up to about 75 or 80 percent of full speed this will open and take this out of circuit so in terms of this motor the capacitor gives improved starting torque and this would typically be used for small lathes and slightly more powerful machines than the split phase motor can work with The plain capacitor motor, I'm sure that many of you have seen these around. The plain capacitor motor has the auxiliary winding and it has a capacitor. So this is the auxiliary and this is the capacitor and this is the rum winding. In this circuit, these are permanently left in circuit. They're not switched out. And this type of motor is very, very commonly used for central heating pumps. And that's probably the place where most of you would be likely to see it. So that takes us on to uh, the capacitor start capacitor run motor. So this one is quite different. The capacitor start capacitor run motor uh, is the best performing of all the motors that we've got here but it's also the most expensive let me run through the diagram for you we have the auxiliary or start winding if you want to call it that but it should really be called auxiliary in this one and there is a capacitor 
which I'm going to label as C2. That will go with the text in your handout. But there is another capacitor. Um, there's the capacitor, and that is in series with a centrifugal switch. So that is C1. Quick run through. Um, this capacitor, C1, is the start capacitor. It's literally used to aid starting, but this capacitor is permanently in circuit and so is this winding. So once it runs to about 75 or 80 percent of full speed, this is switched out and this remains in circuit. Altogether, this motor has better starting torque, improved running torque, um, and it's used for more difficult start loads, things like compressors or pumps. The next one, the universal motor. Uh, the universal motor is called so because it can be used on either AC or DC. It doesn't matter which supply it goes on. Um, let's have a quick run at how it's arranged. Um, here's the first supply terminal and that goes around the field. That is then in series with the armature and that goes around the next pole. So this could be an AC or a DC supply and this is an armature with brushes and I'm sure many of you have experienced this already. It's in um, mains electric hand tools. Uh, hand drilling machines, detail sanders, electric planes, vacuum cleaners, those sort of pieces of equipment. 